Hello and welcome to another episode of the Full Force Weekly, brought to you by Generals Joe's Reborn.com with me, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80. For today's episode, I'm joined by the awesome Patrick, not Picard Stewart. In this regular video series, we round up all the week's news in the world of G.I. Joe. What is it, Pat? It's the Full Force Weekly. We're getting really smooth at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're getting much better at it. It's it's me that's that's, you know, had to do all the improving. That's not true. Um, I will say, though, that it's taken us 46 episodes. <laughs> Has it? <laughs> no, we didn't really start. I didn't really start handing it off to you until about five episodes ago. So it, that's not I, fair. And I don't think I've been on all 46 episodes. So No, nah, you've only been on maybe 45 of them, I reckon. <laughs> no, not, actually, that, not that many. I actually want to know how many you've been on now. I want to go through and check all Ten. of the... No, you've been on way more than that. <laughs> yeah, I have. I've seen you spin round in that chair so often. Um, right, anyway, and we've got a new one now, which is you looking at some toys in the background, and then, well, it's it's great. It's almost, I, I would say it's on par with the original intro. I think the other one took some people by surprise. I, I don't know, it was, that was a crazy fun day. We all, we all kind of made our own intros that day. That was so much fun, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Those are the days, um, all of about seven or eight weeks ago. Um, right then, let's get stuck into the news. There's not much to really go through this this week, Pat, but we did have quite a significant amount of news out of Renegade Game Studios. Renegade Game Studios put on an awesome show last weekend for Renegade Con Virtual, including panels for their upcoming G.I. Joe deck building and role playing games. Writer Ryan Costello discussed the Essence 20 system as well as his background with the brand, and Robert Atkins and Steve Morris got into the artwork for the game, which we will be going into in more depth later this week, courtesy of Robert Atkins himself. We got a crash course in creating your own roleplay characters thanks to Elisa Teague and Dustin Fletcher, and we got to see a number of the miniatures like Scarlet and Duke, as well as Daddy Louie painting a gung-ho miniature and revealing Snake Eyes, Lady J and Jinx from the 12-figure set. There were numerous expansion reveals and a dice set and bag, all of which are available to pre-order now. Links in the description. Pat, did you watch the event? I tried, but unfortunately I was working for part of it, so I really didn't have the time to watch the whole thing. You didn't have time to watch all one. 73 hours of it? No, it's, yeah, work, work occurred during that time. Unfortunately, I was working during the G.I. Joe stuff, so uh, I watched your recaps of it, and then I jumped into a little bit of it. But I, I may be missing some some details here. That's good. Um, we pride ourselves on the full force of missing so many details. <laughs> it's you have it covered. You have it covered. So, so I'm all good. Yeah, it's cool. I'll explain everything. So, uh, yeah, so obviously at first we got the the kind of, not the reveals, the, the, fi the final official reveals, I would say, of both the role-playing and deck-building games. Uh, and we had, like, a, you know, basically um, the explanation of, what each of them are effectively which again was very vague uh, and for newbies like ourselves into this world um it's not like you know other than them maybe going through an entire game on camera which they did with power rangers i believe but with um you know gi joe i think that would have been a good thing to see to actually see a game in progress what they did do really well though uh, especially for the role playing side of things is they had a whole panel where they discussed how to create your own character um, which was actually really interesting to check out. And again, links in the description if you want to see that video again by Elisa Teague and Dustin Fletcher. And what they really kind of explained, which was great for me because I just, you know, have so little experience in RPGs, is this really cool way of like building your own character just using this character sheet and the rules by which you fill it in. So... You know, you give it, you give this character a code name, a specialty. You give them background and influences, and then you start building their like, I suppose they're like strengths, and they are four points basically that you that they focus on. It's strength, speed, smarts, and social. And I think you're given points to kind of disperse with like immediately. Like here, are you, here are the points we're just giving you disperse them in you know where you think it, it makes sense for your character that you're building so based on what specialty they are I think they chose a sniper and they were going through that and so obviously some of the 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 things they needed were awareness and survivalist 
and those are the two points they that's where they put those two points in so like that made a lot of sense and then as they kind of went on they explained that if you kind of add certain aspects to their background and their influences that gives you more points to then disperse throughout those uh, options again so you effectively build your character from nothing from scratch and you're given points based on what you fill in in those kind of spaces so it's it's actually really cool and it creates this really rounded character with pretty much everything like accounted for in terms of their personality and their specialty as well which is really cool so that's something that i was really excited about and also they mentioned that um, with the weapons, you can just like create weapons, like you can make your own. So I think that's I think people can have a lot of fun with this. Is, I mean, is that something that after kind of going through that pat, is that something that kind of interests you to want to do? Do you want to create a character for something like this? Well, I think it's great that they showed the creation of a character, just because for people like me, I mean, it wasn't like I was totally unaware of uh, role playing games yeah. as a kid. I, I remember several times I would get to the stage of creating a character and I would I would spend the day with one of my friends creating a character for like the, the Marvel RPG or you know one of the others and and then we would never get around to actually sitting down and playing <laughs> so I, I think kind of showing us showing uh, the creation of the character to kind of speed through that step may be a, a good thing uh, I don't know I really don't know what the future holds for me with this game because it's not like I have a lot of local friends that would be interested in playing, but people play games online a lot now, so so I don't know. I don't I still, know. We still need to get a bit. We still need to get a game going for for the full force team. I think that would be so much fun, just getting everyone to do will. do like the homework of building their character and then bringing it to the to the, to like a like a, a fun little video that we could put out. Well, I've always wanted to actually go through the process of playing. So I would think that the world landing a, a real effort of a G.I. Joe role-playing game in our laps is definitely the invitation maybe that I need to actually sit down and, and actually play a game. Exactly. We need this motivation, don't we? Um, That's right. I would also add as well with the role playing game, um, they obviously they revealed a number of miniatures, which is really cool. Like I love the thought of having these like miniature figures. I just did a, a chat, uh, just an interview. Well, you know, like a a, a loose kind of uh, chat with uh, Bradford at uh, Cast Dice, and had a great time on that show. Brad's really cool. We had a, a good, we, you know, he, he loves GI Joe. He's a big tabletop gamer out in Australia at the moment. And uh, again, link in the description for that little uh, interview that I did with him. And uh, basically, we just discussed everything about this game as well. So if you're if you're not getting what you need from uh, Pat and I today, you can go on there and you can get some more details from uh, an actual expert in this, which is Bradford. Uh, Brad, I'll call him. I'll call him his full name. Um, and basically, yeah, a really good um, kind of chat with him about that. And the miniatures are something that really like grabbed me because. He paints a lot of G.I. Joe minis. He does a lot of that kind of stuff. And he, uh, go onto Carl Facebook page and check him out because he is amazing. And he's got, like, vehicles. He's just got the maggot in, and he's going to be painting that up. Uh, beautiful little miniatures. Absolutely wonderful stuff. Um, but what I really liked about these is that, you know, we had Daddy Louie on there painting gung-ho and showing you, like, you know, how to, to do that nice and comfortably. I mean, he's an expert. Like, you know, mine's not going to be looking as good as his. But I love the thought of, like doing something like that and just adding a little bit more into this game with these little role-playing miniatures and we had Scarlet and Duke were kind of shown off officially like well it was all official but they showed them off like you know the turnarounds the kind of 3D sculpts on screen and then Daddy Louie painted up gung-ho on like an entire panel of him just painting it it was brilliant it was great to watch really enjoyed it and every now and again he would reveal a new figure from that set of 12 uh, in the end, we've got Snake Eyes, Lady J, Jinx, and obviously Gung Ho. So, it, you know, we, we've basically got six that we know from the 12. Uh, I imagine there are going to be some bad guys in there too. Like, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're holding out on us, possibly for that expansion, for all the expansions going on with these with these games. But, I mean, what were your thoughts on the, mini on the minis, Pat? Well, the miniatures are always one of the things that would, that would kind of draw me in. I don't know if everybody kind of had one back in the 80s but i can remember that there was a store 
that was specifically dedicated to role playing games yeah. in the area. And I remember walking into it and the number of miniatures, there was just a lot of really cool stuff back then. And of course, back then they were all made of pewter, which isn't that feasible, I don't think, anymore. <laughs> no. I used to or have maybe not a good idea. I used to have a team of blood angels from Warhammer and they were like that as well. Absolutely loved those things. And yeah, yeah, that is that's not the case anymore. These things are like a plastic or they're they've got they're of that special kind of material aren't they that they have to kind of knock them out in but i do remember having some of them and you know being pewter and it's that soft metal they would bend and break relatively yes easily. so yeah it's actually kind of nice that they're not there'd be a bit of flash on there or something that you'd be like Ding. Yeah, yeah yeah totally oh well, god i remember that yeah but you're right if they had like weapons the barrels snapping off if they had an antenna that's coming off if they had yeah like, yeah it was it was so yeah, a so true. antenna for, forget it yeah f- yeah absolutely um i'm i love i do love the thought of these miniatures i can't wait everything that was shown off i think was pre-production stuff it was either kind of uh, 3d printed or it was like pre-production materials um but really excited to see what we're going to get with those i'm definitely how I'm, I'm really just really excited uh, about this even just from a collector standpoint, not even from like a, you know, getting in and playing it, which I do want to do. I do want to actually get in and play this. But like the thought again of, of miniature G.I. Joe stuff is just making me all tingly inside. Yeah. And, and the deck building game is going to be a lot of fun just for the art and to have just like that character roster and the the vehicles and, and anything else that may appear in the deck building game is going to be see well that's a very good point yes the deck building game was also very much kind of di- like explained and, and showed off uh and we had robert atkins steve morris who have done a lot of the art towards uh, the deck building game uh if if not they've done all of it uh i know i did see a john royal image in there for a jinx i believe it was so i think they've taken from from they've, they have taken from gi joe you know media from all over the place but um Robert and uh, Steve have done a lot of original art for this too. And some of the art, I'm going to talk about Steve Morris first because I love the the covers gorgeous for the book, but then also some of the interior shots. There was one of Ace, Duke and Shipwreck uh, kind of unloading a Humvee with a, you know, a, a, a jet flying by. And I think there's some sort of boat in the background. I think it's just like a generic kind of like, destroyer or like uh you know that kind of thing or like a maybe i don't know if it's a i don't know it's just a generic boat i think but then also but you know that was really cool but then also there's agent faces in a briefing room with law and order looking at screens with major blood on it and i'm just thinking the art that he does has such a it just reminds me of the adventure books, like all Earl Norum art. Uh, and Steve has his very much his own style, but there's a real Earl Norum vibe coming out of that for me. Yeah, and I kind of I kind of like the the mix of eras because that was definitely Valor, Valor versus Venom Ace standing there in that shot, which uh, yeah. kind of makes me wonder um, about that the Jinx miniature. So I think that we talked about that, didn't we? Yes. Let, well, okay. We'll come. Let's come to the Jinx miniature quickly because a side note because we have kind of gone past that and I forgot. Yeah, I'm about kind that. of all over the place. No, that's good. That's good because the Jinx miniature was. It looked like almost like a mixture of Sigma Six and Valor versus Venom, didn't it? It didn't really have a specific look, and that kind of made us think: Are we looking at some sort of classified design here? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the the Valor versus Venom and Sigma Six design would be related anyway because there is that bit of transition with robot rebellion into sigma six yeah so it could just be pulling from that era but it kind of does make me wonder if that's the direction in general that jinx is going to go into the future because i could definitely see it that was a really good design so bringing that jinx into the classified series could actually make sense i will i will posit uh, a theory here at this at this stage i think we might even be looking at a cancelled uh classified design main and mainly due to the fact that you know how long these things take to develop designs yeah. designs are in the you know in the pot early early doors and i was thinking you know like as gi joe came out jinx wouldn't have been first on the docket anyway she'd have been 
you know a few quite a number of waves down the line i would imagine as as we've as we found out we're like well almost uh almost finishing the second year of classified and still no sign of her um and what i was thinking was that possibly because you know we've also seen classified go quite far in their designs in that first wave but then also bring it close again when you're looking at barbecue and breaker and flint and jay and i don't know like Mo- the viper all of those kind of characters and designs they've almost like they've the early waves seem to be pushing it uh, uh, you know a little bit but then the most recent releases have almost brought it back so i'm wondering if maybe if we do see jinx in the future she's going to look more vintage that's a that's a pretty pretty good call i kind of think though Jinx may be a character worth visiting more than once yeah. if the line goes on long enough. Yeah. So maybe we would eventually get to that unmasked and Valor versus Venom looking Jinx. Yeah. I mean, maybe I shouldn't call it the Valor versus Venom one because it's not like people are are clamoring too much for updates <laughs> of those. But it's a good design. I really think that if they applied something new to it, that. Uh, it would just look like a good figure. And I really think that if it if the figure looks good, that's that should hopefully be a sell. And Jinx is also one of those ones where it kind of would make sense to have a masked and an unmasked. Yes, big time, big time. Because you want to, especially when you can you can go into a bit more design with the hair, you know, you can, you can make that more kind of striking and more in, like, you know, really cool. Uh, and then you can have the masked head as well. And then obviously down the line, you might even be... Look- well, I actually, we've had this conversation in the past, and I think where I've wanted to kind of add in some homages from the cartoon and the movie, we're now looking at Super 7 doing that, aren't we? So I think Classified will have its own thing going on and probably won't visit that, will it? Not with Ultimates and and, and reactions. Not too deeply, I, I don't think. I don't think that it's going to be too literally pulled from the cartoon i don't think it could be wrong well it'd be weird to have like a very like an, a classified jinx that's very close to vintage and then a reaction and a ultimates that are close to the cartoon because i don't think there'd be enough difference there i think i think classified has to do its own thing i think it has to kind of push the boundaries a little bit and i think they've done a great job so far like i've been so happy with pretty much every, well, every figure that's come out so far um, fingers crossed Armadillo still, you know, thought I'd give him a shout out right now. For of course, of course Armadillo. <laughs> okay, well, coming back to Renegade uh, Con Virtual then and the deck building game. And we also got on top of Steve Morris's beautiful art, which is just so awesome. I'm, I'm loving like everything I'm seeing of that, of his work. We've got Robert Atkins as well, and he um, revealed a number of new pieces. Uh, Crimson Guard, which looked incredible. And he, he did a little story, he told a little story where I think, I don't think, I'm not, I think he said someone else drew the, the other Crimson Guard in the background. And he was saying that it made it like they were, they were packing in story into this image. And uh, it was the fact that that Crimson Guard is, is like the, the alarms are going off and that Crimson Guard is racing to his post that he's just abandoned. And he's like trying to get there really fast. So there's this really nice like visual story going on with that image and again it's it's atkins isn't it and he's he's like the i don't know he's like this legend in the gi joe modern art era isn't he yeah i would say so his his art has such a gi joe look to it that it's kind of kind of synonymous he's he's definitely a permanent addition to gi joe a hundred percent another thing i like about the art as well as the main crimson guard in that shot is pointing and he looks angry and he's like it's almost like he's yelling at his Crimson Guards to actually get into position kind of thing because, you know, the lights are on, the alarms are going off. And I just love that. I think it's a really, you know, without doing a lot, they've, it says a lot, you know, the, the actual image. So I, I, I love that. And obviously, yeah, like the, the detail on it is, is gorgeous. The, the actual uh, Crimson Guard design is just, it's, it's like, I don't know, ageless. I love it. Um, on top of that as well, we got a really cool Dr. Mindbender piece. And th- th- he's, I think he said this was born out of a commission that he did a while back as well. I think he, like the, the, the pose and the design and everything and like the idea. Uh, and so he's kind of 
rejigged it a little bit to kind of go into this into this book and it looks awesome and what i love about this more than anything is that he's holding his like weapon with the the hose as well like it's like it's really is screaming back to that that vintage um figure isn't it uh yeah i don't have it in front of me right now to double check but as i recall oh yeah that's that's nice and I, i'm glad that the, that the uh the weapon's actually connected to something it's amazing it's amazing yeah. and obviously in the background you've got all these like uh you know like the we've spent valor versus venom a few times already but you've got those pods haven't you with like experiments like back to tanks almost kind of uh with like what looked like cobra or actually that actually looks like quick kick i've, I've never really understood what dr mindbender's weapon is though to be quite honest has it does it has it actually said what his weapon is on any on like the card or anything you know on the side it would explain the accessories wouldn't it yeah 3d joe's has been doing a really good job of actually describing putting descriptions that are from the side you know writing them in exactly as they appear i'm, I'm checking it as well right now yeah I've, i never knew what it was never knew what it was oh it, it's just an electric prod and a generator so it's just okay. a, it's just a prod people with like electricity, which kind of makes a lot of sense now thinking about it. And it looks yeah, it looks like a prod. It looks like a cattle prod of some description. It kind of makes sense. Um, the initial name during production of Mindbender was Interrogator. Yes. So yeah, yeah, I can't imagine he's too nice with an electric prod. And it, well, it's also the master of mind control, isn't he? So I'm guessing that has something to do with with that as well that kind of uh what's the word Pav conditioning yes pavlov's dog uh classical conditioning and uh and making people react to certain things under certain uh you know um inputs so in this case it would be electricity making people like you know <laughs> I, I suppose associate association with pain and things like that so that it's really dark when you get into it why Dr. Mindbender has this. Uh, but or maybe yeah. he's just using it. Maybe it's preparation. He uses it to protect himself from his crazy creations like monster vipers and bio vipers and whatever came later. And that, um, that giant weird monster that he created before Serpentor, which I'm still surprised hasn't made it out as some sort of uh, action figure. I think that would be amazing. That and the well, fatal... you never know. Super 7 could be on it. Oh, we need to have that. We need to have the fatal fluffies. In fact, a two pack. <laughs> That's completely pointless because they're not even in the same episode. Uh, but yes, Dr. Mindbender, beautiful piece of art there from Robert Atkins. And as I said in the intro, we'll be talking to Robert Atkins. Uh, we were planning to have him on this weekly, but um, basically due to certain NDAs and having to go through certain ap approval uh, kind of paths, uh, we have had to push it to next week, but we will be chatting to Robert Atkins uh, about his artwork on the Renegade Game Studio stuff. So we'll get more insight into those pieces and maybe even more. You know, they might want to reveal some uh, some some new stuff on the show. You never know. Um, Robert also did like the cards too. So he did the uh, the starter card, the GI the GI card, which is effectively a green shirt, um, and then also he he's kind of doing a lot of the mission cards and that was really interesting for me because i want to i want to kind of speak to him about the challenges involved in packing a lot visually onto such a small space that has to kind of convey what is going on to make sense with the card you know what i mean because that, that must be quite a difficult thing to do and something i've never really thought of before when i've just played these games i've just gone oh i love the art but by doing that and playing the game comfortably, the art's doing its job, I guess. Do you know what I mean? So that's something I've never really kind of taken into consideration. Well, does the game have like an art director that would kind of give an idea to him of, of what is needed within the card? Oh, I'm Make sure. Make sure you pack these four things in I'm or whatever. Sure, yeah, I'm sure that would be the case. Um, again, that's something I'll definitely be asking him next week. Um, but even once you've had that direction, like... You're almost creating a comic yeah. page in a panel, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and expecting it to be on a relatively small space. It's not like a splash page. Exactly, exactly. Uh, there's some, you did some more awesome stuff. There's the killer whale he did. So there's, you know, again, that's, an, that's a difficult thing. Getting that in that small space and making it make sense. He's played a lot there with the, I would say, the perspective as well. So it's kind of like 
you know, coming at it from that kind of front side angle uh, to kind of fit it all in shot. Um, and yeah, just I, I, I love Robert Robert's work. It, it is so synonymous with GI Joe. And like I said, cannot wait to chat with him about that. Um, in in terms of in terms of like the actual Renegade, the the deck building game and the role playing game, um, I'm certainly going to be getting involved in these. Um, Pat, are you going to be buying these? Are you going to be picking these up? Are you going to be playing them when you can with me and other friends online? Well, the deck building game went online some time ago, and there's actually, I believe, a pre order bonus associated with that. Correct. Yeah, so yeah. I ordered that. Oh, that was the, the Dawn Moreno card, wasn't it? And the special, yeah, the special yeah. Um, uh, coin. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so I ordered that a couple of weeks ago. I have not ordered the role-playing game yet, so I kind of need to decide what I'm doing there. I definitely want to grab that. I'm, I'm looking at the deluxe one as well, only for the fact that I think there's a, there's a lovely... like I, I love that cover, though, from from Steve, but the cover that's on the deluxe version is like a they showed like a power rangers version of it it's like a black kind of shiny cover with like a like it was like a helmet so i imagine it would be like you know some sort of gi joe iconography maybe the star and stripes on the front who knows so you're saying that if i were to order one thing for the rpg i should probably order the deluxe uh core rule book yes <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know what I can't remember off the top of my head what makes it special other than the cover. And if that's the case, I think something else comes with it. Um, in which case, obviously, that makes sense to go for. But like I said, I love that cover art. So it's difficult of for me. You need a dice. Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah. I should just roll the die and go and, and pick it that way. Um, yeah. I'll start. I'll create a character and do a whole role playing game as to how I'm going, which one I'm going with, just for that. Um, yeah, anyway, that's Renegade Game Studios and Renegade Con Virtual. Like I said, I've, I've done a big chat with Cast Dice. Uh, that's in the description if you want to check that out. And also, all of the links to, well, the main link to all of the pre-orders will be in uh, the description below as well. So if you are interested, guys, jump on it and keep an eye out for the Full Force's very own playthrough, <laughs> if we can call it that. Uh, we don't even know what's going to happen, but we're going to we're going to attempt something, uh, and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, Pat, let's move on to the next uh, news item because there has been another news item this week, and that is in character. Oh, Horse Weekly. <laughs> oh, I'm, leaving I'm sorry. <laughs> you paused for way too long. <laughs> Brilliant. In Character Options news, UK toy manufacturer Character Options have obtained multiple Hasbro licenses to produce micro figures for their micro toy box line. The line consists of miniaturised versions of mainly 80s properties, much like that of the world's smallest by Super Impulse. Included in the lineup are Transformers, My Little Pony, Glowworms, Power Rangers, and of course G.I. Joe. But Character Options also have a number of non-Hasbro properties, including He-Man, Barbie, and Hot Wheels. Series 1 will contain 50 different figures, with Duke being the G.I. Joe representative. What is interesting is that this figure will be smaller than the world's smallest, but doesn't come with any accessories. Super Impulse might have to change the world's smallest name now to almost the world's smallest. Expect more G.I. Joe characters to follow. Series 1 is available as a 5-pack for £5.99, 10-pack for £9.99, 15-pack for £14.99, and a 20-pack for £19.99. The packs contain random toys, but several are displayed openly. Pat, how do you feel about this new contender to the world's smallest throne? Well, it's a little weird because they're hitting upon so many of the same brands that worlds... It's not like they're the, the 80s is going to come out with additional brands that were in the 80s yeah. in order for companies to reference. But it does seem like this company is just doing the exact same thing as world's smallest only making them smaller. <laughs> I know, it's weird, isn't it? Um, Is, are they somehow related? Is this like some sort of sub-license or... Do you know what? I'm not... I did think that initially. I was thinking, I wonder if they are doing this like in some way, shape or form in conjunction. Through Super Impulse. Yeah, but um, I haven't been able to find any information about that particular point. I know that Character Options are a legitimate company. They've done Doctor Who figures in the past. They've done 
numerous things uh i think like the military line as well they've done like a kind of almost like a i think they they teamed up with like actual armed forces in the united kingdom to do like toys for their figures if i remember mm-hmm. rightly my, i'm sure that was character options um mm-hmm. but, but yeah they, they've definitely done a lot of stuff and at the moment now with this micro toy box stuff yeah i mean when i look at it when i look at like the he-man figure and i look at the duke figure I'm kind of like, yeah, it's cute. I'm probably going to get a set when I get home. I probably because they're, you know, it's nice to. They look the displays are really cute. The boxes are really nice. Um, but in terms of like the actual figure itself, I'm definitely more of a fan of the Super Impulse stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, he, it's not the best picture of Duke anyway. But he's, he's he seems to be floating around inside the bubble, uh, and he doesn't. He's, obviously, there's going to be there's no like crazy detail on him at that start at that size so yeah it's um it's an odd one to me but still intriguing yeah i think that the smaller you go the more difficult it becomes to put detail on them and super impulse kind of push the limits of how small you can get and you're still putting an accessory in their hand and a helmet on their head if you can get it to stay on yeah one of my friends was telling me that he actually saw a Ninja Turtle in a small package like that in a multi-pack in five below. I don't know what company was doing that. Interesting. That uh, I've. This is the thing as well. Like you're not sure whether you're seeing like knockoff bootleg. I mean, five below doesn't necessarily do that all the time. No, he said that it was. He said that it was um, legit. Yeah, like a legit Ninja Turtle. He was a Ninja Turtles. He's collected those for a while, so. I don't know what that was about. It, was makes, it just was makes it, you wonder what else is out there. Was it Raffalangelo or Leotello? <laughs> yeah. Donanado, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm thinking I'm probably not going to be going after these, though. They're not going to be something that's going to be readily available. Yeah, true. You stick them underneath my nose, and there's a few dollars marked on them, and I'm walking through a store. Yeah, maybe I, I, might, I might go after them, but... I think it would be easier than know. that. I think it would be easier than that to, to bait you in. Just having it there in front of you as you walk in. Oh, oh, it's $1,000. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's what you'd be, you'd be like. Oh, Duke's in that one. I can see him. Yoink. That's what it's going to be. You know it. You, you Don't lie to me. You know that's going to be the case. Look behind well, you. Up, do you think that these are going to show up in the United States or this is a... I don't know. I, that's that's one thing I just I kind of doubt. Be, it. I can't be a hundred percent sure about. Um, what they may do is end up on Amazon, in which case oh, that yeah, would be like good. a nice, easy way of getting hold of them. But I, but it's be random packed. Yes, that's another thing. Like you might, they might have images of the display box, but it might be just a generic image, and you don't know what you're actually going to get in that sense. See, there's a couple of reasons to say no for me. It's the the random packedness, and the fact that they're just not going to be readily readily available right in the store. Like if you can see them, it's not a blind bag. Yes, yeah. Well, I think what the, the little five pack. There's a little window, but you don't see all of them very clearly. I think, okay. and then the rest of them are like generally uh, displayed. But then there are mystery figures included on there that, that are covered so you've, you've got like yeah you're fighting a battle there um i would suggest though if i see duke on display in a set um when i'm out in the uk i will be picking him up and i'll be messaging you guys and saying hey guys i've found a couple do you want them and that's when you're gonna go sure i probably will <laughs> i was hoping you were gonna say full force weekly, full force weekly. <laughs> I almost did, but then I was like, no. I- <laughs> Amazing. Oh, I wish you had, but that was just as good because it was funnier. Um, right, let's... Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, we've, we've, we've talked about this enough, I think. Uh, both of us are... Pat is in. He just doesn't realise it yet until I, until I dangle the carrot in front of him. You can't just keep buying the same thing only because smaller. it keeps getting smaller. Yeah. Eventually, it's just going to be like a drawing of Duke on a grain of rice, and then that's it. You know, well, just super tiny, mate. the The trend is that it goes really, really stupidly small, and then it starts re- uh, like going back to retro things, so like much bigger sizes again. So well, they, they should go the other way. Honestly, Gentle Giant kind of hit the mark at the wrong time. Totally, totally. Like those figures at this point 
the general giant made are are super popular so if they would have done something other than 1982 or if they would have done it in like 2019 or 2020 agreed i think that stuff would have been a much bigger success well for one thing it would have had the backing of the the wave of gi joe you know that's uh, right the movie yeah. and, the, and the and the big promoting and all that kind of stuff but i do agree with you because that's the gentle giant figures were something that i avoided mainly just too, they, they were just too expensive at the time not like you know that you couldn't really you couldn't really produce them for any cheaper but like I feel like when they were out at the time, I wasn't in the position to buy as much stuff. So um, that was one of the reasons why I missed out on the Gentle Giant stuff. But yeah, it, it, had it been this year, damn, I'd have been picking them up big time. And if they'd have been doing it rather than just, you know, Grunt, uh, Stalker, all those kind of characters, you know, just Snake Eyes, yada, yada, yada. If it had been like here's one from 82, but here's one from 85, and here's one from 93 or something. You know, that would be cool. Yeah, they were trying to share that tooling, and they also skipped over somehow. They skipped over Cobra Commander. I think that going with the core characters, Cobra Commander, Duke, Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, that would have been the way to to lead for Gentle Giant. And totally. Instead, you know, it's grunt and rock and roll and some straight arm characters that, that I liked but I don't think everybody did. They were trying to do the Star Wars thing, where Star yeah. Wars started with 1977 and moved on up, and I, that just didn't work for G.I. Joe. Yeah. I, but, uh, you know, we're kind of talking about micro, and I, I'm thinking macro. Uh, <laughs> we need, we, I, I think it would be cool if Gentle Giant gave it another shot. I just don't see it happening. Agreed, agreed. Gentle Giant also did the two minis, didn't they? Little mini figures. Yeah, but again, you know, uh, world's smallest... The world's smallest, I think, actually were a little bit larger than those, weren't they? That's what I. That's the general I, giant mini figures were not that good. Um, you've done an articulate points on this entire subject, so uh, I, yeah, I bow yeah. to your knowledge on this one, Pat. Uh, but yeah, yeah the gentle giant one. The gentle giant mini figures were strange to me because they had the arms, on, like the the sculpt of the arms were on the wrong figure. I believe it was uh, was it was rock and roll and snake eyes, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and Rock and Roll was painted as if he had short sleeves, even though he, they were long. And Snake Eyes had short sleeves, even though everything on Snake Eyes was painted black. It just wasn't a very articulated figure. I, I thought that I think the the uh, world's smallest figures are a little nicer. Yeah, I agree. Um, what's your favorite version of Rock and Roll? While we're talking about Rock and Roll, oh come on, 1989 Rock and Roll is amazing. V two, yeah absolutely agree with you first time we've been on par i think on a version right there i yeah, thought you were going to I say mean, version it's... three rock and roll in the black suit with the goggles and the uh the three three pronged staff and <laughs> and the blow gun <laughs> well no that was what made made 1989 so amazing was this return to some classic characters Agre yeah totally. and updating them so well tundra stalker may not be the definitive stalker but yeah, it's an is. excellent figure he's the definitive stalker for me if we're if talking versions of stalker i'm all over tundra i think that is that's the peak that is the peak of, of stalker for me he just looks like he'd be too warm everywhere he goes not in the tundra uh <laughs> true uh this i suppose this is the thing isn't it like that is more a that version isn't an update it's a mission almost it's yeah. a mission change yeah. so like that's another thing that we could have a conversation on uh, again like that's something we can maybe talk about next week if we if the week's news isn't very let's do that next week if the week's news isn't all like ridiculous let's talk about versions of characters how does that sound that sounds fine to me we'll do a structure yeah, and you're gonna ha hear me pushing 1989 we'll do a rating system and everything it's gonna be a brilliant okay cool um anyway okay well that's uh, almost brings us to the end of the news, but before we go, we have a bit of sad news to talk about as well. On Friday, August 27th, we lost another legend in the world of G.I. Joe. Bob Prupis held a number of high-profile positions at Hasbro over the years, spanning from 1978 to 1995. He was directly responsible for the reintroduction of G.I. Joe in 1982, not to mention the introduction of Transformers in 1984 as well. 
He was beloved by his colleagues, who all seemed to have nothing but respect and admiration for him, and Carson at 3D Joe's made a lovely post about Bob on his social pages, which just underlines how important he was to this fandom and all the things we hold dear in the G.I. Joe community. Our thoughts go out to his family and close friends at this time. You will be missed, Bob. Rest in peace. I just want to say that that his contribution to, to the world of toys is immeasurable. I actually do kind of get I actually do kind of get sad. Like I, I didn't know him personally, but it, it does make me sad. Yeah. Because yeah. you have a guy that intro, you know, was pivotal, yeah. pivotal on the introduction of G.I. Joe in 82 and on Transformers in 84, but he wasn't just there for the introduction of these things. You know, he saw them through. One of the things that I didn't know for the longest time was as a fan of Transformers, there was there was a moment where Transformers had ended in the United States because sales were in decline. And what that meant for Japan was that they really economically couldn't develop all these new toys if there wasn't as big of a market as there had been yeah. whenever they could sell them in Japan and in the United States. And Europe w- was almost slipping as well, but Bob Prupus moved to the UK and kind of handled that. Like, I, I think he went over there in like 88 or 89 yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And, you know, Transformers was in decline in the United States, ended in, in 90. And, you know, he kind of saw Transformers through. I mean, what a big, what a big brand Transformers is in addition to G.I. Joe. So it's like, not only was he, was he there whenever some of the most influential things in my life got started, but then he also saw them through to make sure that they had longevity. Yeah, absolutely. And like you say, such a instrumental figure in so many different things that we are, like are still talking about to this day, like still discussing to this very day. So yeah, um, he's a massive loss to the, to the, to the world, to the GI Joe community, but to the world itself. Um, we wish all of his family, you know, all the, you know, just, just basically our thoughts go out to them and, uh, yeah, rest in peace. And, uh, well, we'll move on there, Pat. Yeah, so even though that was really depressing and quite sad, uh, we still have shout outs to do. Pat, uh, who would you like who would you like to shout out this week? I've got a funny feeling I know who the first one's gonna be. Well, it is gonna be Philip. He said I'm I'm I, I owe him an apology. I have a tendency to have like some things that I owe to to mail to Philip. And then he's like, Hey, you want me to pick this up for you? And I'm like, <laughs> sure. Two days later, it's at my house. And I'm like uh i'm a jerk i've had stuff for him for months <laughs> i get the feeling so I, he personally delivers it as well and just like sneaks it drops it and then <laughs> drives back again yeah yeah so shout out to philip exactly uh any others oh you know I, I need to write these down prior to the episode so that i'm not just uh not just thinking of it then um no i, I think that's that's probably it we've only done like 30 plus episodes together pat it's not you know i don't don't expect you to, to catch on yet be prepared no okay here's, here's a question for you have you got anything in this week oh the number of things i got in this week are embarrassing in a big way or a, a small way well you know and i'll blame philip uh he introduced me to gi joe manga oh and okay so i got a couple of issues of that which were really interesting because I didn't know that the, until he started talking about it, I didn't know that there were characters exclusive to the manga in Japan. Yeah. And I got in one of the issues that he showed off whenever we were talking about them in an episode of Articulated I was Point. just going to say that, yeah. I got in another one that does not have any new characters in it, but I'm flipping it through and I'm like, hang on, you know, it's a, there's a bit of a, a hurricane or something going on in this. And it's, oh, there's the weather dominator showing up. You know, it's just cool to see it reappear somewhere else. So totally, uh, got in a couple of those, um, and I got in, which I'm gonna have to remember to take a picture. And, yeah, and take send a picture it. and send them to me now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm bad about that. I got a Microman 
Microman. That's right, vintage Microman. A, a a micro dober, which is a a dog that Migo should have released back in the seventies, so that I could have played with it as a child, but they didn't. I mean, it, it's it's a dog. It has magnetic joints in its shoulders and in its hips and in its neck, so that you dope. Can, well, so that you can turn it into like a vehicle for a guy to ride, because that makes sense. <laughs> of course it does, right? It's amazing. I don't know. It's possible that that was one of the things in the Microman line after Micronauts ended in the United States. Not sure. Or maybe it was around that same time. Maybe I need to look up the dates to be fair to Miko. But a little upset that it wasn't something from my childhood. You've let us down. Slowly. You've let us down, Migo. I'll uh, contact them. I've got their number now, so I'll I'll tell them they should be uh, getting right on that. That's right. I, I, I want an explanation as to why this wasn't in wasn't at least in the stores as as I was a child because it's amazing. So I got that. Dog. Yeah, and just some other stuff, just some some random things. Um, but I, I've been buying way too much uh, vintage transformers and, and things of that sort. Amazing. Uh, I've been quite low on the getting in things, uh, honestly. Uh, in fact, have I got anything in? I don't think I have. Um, yeah. So there you go, guys. There's a first for everything, isn't there? The, a week has gone by, and I haven't. Act I mean, let's face it. We both have pre-orders up the wazoo, don't we? Let that's another thing. I had to create a spreadsheet for my pre-orders, <laughs> which is something I've never done. <laughs> I got to keep track of where I have all of them. It's crazy. So true. It's so true. And then, like, finding like information on those pre-orders is just you know you need a link in there too. Because it is. Oh, that's what I did. Yeah, yeah, I went through. I went through and uh, did a copy paste of the title right into the spreadsheet. So if I click on it, it just takes me right to the website where where it is. Genius. That's genius. Uh, I'll probably have to do that too. I scribbled mine down on a notepad and ran out of pages, so uh, it's kind of embarrassing. But it's you know, I I, I guess everything Super Seven for GI Joe, and then multiple classified back orders uh still haven't got alpha commandos so snake eyes and timbers still you know not here um yeah me well, neither i'm trying to think of oh uh i've got another heavy artillery roadblock coming from uh pulse because i remember at the time i was getting it for you and then you said no nah, don't worry it's cool i'll get it <laughs> and i was like okay well i've got three yeah, now and now i have two of them i'm gonna use that third one as a tiger force repaint even though we're, let's face it now that tiger force is a thing we're probably going to see. We'll probably him. eventually get one of those. Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking, um, 2023 for Tiger Force Roadblock. Yeah, that makes sense to me. That sounds you've, about right. You've got to give it a year, haven't you? We've had 73 roadblocks so far. Anyway, I'll get back to my shout outs. As always, big shout out to all the family and to my wonderful wife Kate. Love you all. To Brian Sauer for the awesome graphics. We've got a few weeks left of the summer banners, and then we're going to go into a fall kind of design. What do you think that could be, guys? I mean, you, you might guess it, you might not, but uh, we're going to have an amazing looking next season <laughs> of the Fall Force Weekly. Um, also, shout out to Brad William of Cast Dice Podcast fame. I was on his show the other day talking about the Renegade Game Studios, Jojo Games, as I mentioned before. Super fun time, such a nice dude. Link in the description if you want to check it out, as I've said already. And uh, Cast Dice is worth checking out on Facebook too. He posts a lot of his amazing Jojo miniatures work on there. It's all amazing stuff, so big shout out to Brad. Thank you for having me on once again. It's not Pride Month anymore, but guess what? We are still going to show our support for the LGBTQ plus community because that's the kind of people we are. And as we say every week, we stand with the Asian and Pacific Islander communities in saying stop Asian hate and will continue to do so. Follow the links in the description if you want more information or just want to do more to help. To our patrons, listeners and viewers, thank you so much for everything that you do for us. We really appreciate it. Uh, Pat especially appreciates it. Um, don't you, Pat? Oh, for sure. I thought you were going to say Full Force Weekly, but you, yeah, that's fine. That works as well. Um, yeah, and thanks again, dude, for jumping on and chatting. Even though it's been a light week of news, that still took us about an hour. I think it sound like that I, I get something great out of patrons, listeners, and viewers. Like, 
I appreciate the the discussion and the appreciation. I, I don't know, like he gets sexual gratification from it, right? Yeah, I, I feel like I'm making it sound like it like it, this is a paying gig. This is uh for fun. This is all fun. Yeah, this is nobody gets paid in this uh, situation. No. This is all I take all of Pat's time and give him nothing for it. Um, no, that's not true. That is not true. What do I give you other than a headache? I haven't had to edit any of this myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess, I guess that's enough, I, I guess. Uh, but anyway, dude, thanks for jumping on. You know I appreciate you very much. And uh, basically, that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you for watching the Full Force Weekly. Uh, well, thank you for watching. What was it, Pat? Full Force Weekly. It certainly was. Massive thank you to my awesome co-host, Patrick Not Picard stewart See you next time. And as always, after three... One, two, three. Full force. I want to know, out of all of the listeners and viewers, who says full force along with us at the end of the episode? (laughs) If you do, or if you didn't before, I want you to from now on, no matter where you are on a bus, on a in a at work. If you're like surrounded by friends that have no idea you're a GI Joe fan, I want you to shout at the top of your voice full force along with us at the end of the episode and then whenever people look at you funny and go why did you do that you go it's the full force week <laughs> <laughs> and scene Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page facebook.com forward slash The Full Force and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click on the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force